Hello and welcome. My name is Julian. The purpose of a dash cam is intended to document what happens in front of your vehicle and capture it along with the time, the date, maybe the speed, so it provides you with a record of what happened in front of your vehicle in case you need it in a court case or something like that if you're involved in some incident. Now, there are a lot of manufacturers out there right now offering dash cams. Some of them are very, very well-known brand names. Some of them are, let's say, no-name brands or they're just brands in the field of dash cams that aren't really known anywhere else. As happens a lot in tech markets, in order to compete, a lot of these companies will offer more and more features and present them as more and more compelling cases for you to buy their particular product. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need those features, but their marketing is gonna imply that you do so that you feel compelled to buy it because you've got to have that killer feature. Dash cams are definitely in that phase of their development right now. The basics of a dash cam to capture, document what happens around your vehicle and time, date, location, stamp it is pretty much covered by just about every dash cam manufacturer out there today. So in order for them to compete, they've got to find some way of competing and it's either on brand, it's on price, or it's on feature set. Now, there is a marketing theory out there that if you identify exactly what your consumers want, uh, that's you and me, and you can also remove the features that we don't want. This reduces complexity of the product and therefore it also reduces the cost of the product. So it either makes it more profitable for them or more cost or price competitive for us as consumers. But I think what we have right now is we have a lot of complexity and a lot of features being added to a lot of dash cams in order to compel you and I as consumers to buy that particular product. In this video, I want to look at one of the mid-range products in the range by Garmin. Garmin being a fairly well-known consumer tech company. I'm a fan of Garmin, as some of you may know if you watch other videos of mine. I love their wearables, I love their bike computers, I love an awful lot of their products, actually. I want to look at one now that is called the Garmin Dashcam 67W. I've owned the 67W now for about a year and a half. It just sits in my truck, it sits on the windshield, tucked behind the mirror. The only time I've actually removed it from the truck is today, in order to make this video to, to show it to you. Garmin have been making dash cams now for quite some time. This is not their first generation product. The cameras get better, the resolution of the camera gets better, the lens gets better, and generally also the dash cams have got smaller and smaller. So starting with some of the main specs, it's a 1440 sensor. In other words, it's kind of halfway between 1080p and 4K, but it's not as good as 4K, but it's certainly good enough to be able to zoom in and see license plates and whatnot. The lens has a wide angle view of 180 degrees. That's what the W is for in the name 67W. It has Bluetooth to connect to your phone. It has Wi-Fi to connect to your phone to download footage. It has a battery in it, but it's not a long-term battery. It's maybe about 30 minutes or something like that. It's very lightweight. It's also very small. It still has that, we used to make action cameras look to it, but Sorry, I think GoPro kind of had you there, Garmin. Uh, it has a screen on the back, which does make you very useful to align it to make sure that you've got the view right, and also to scroll through some of the menus if you're gonna try and set it up using that screen. It comes with a windshield mount, which is self-adhesive and bonds very tightly to the windshield. And that's actually them putting a magnet on your windshield, and that's all. So to attach the camera, you just pop it onto that magnet. It's a strong magnet. Now, it means it's very easy to remove in a situation like doing a review on YouTube, but other than that, it's stayed put. In fact, I don't think it's ever dropped off, off that mount. Mine actually came with two adhesive mounts. So in theory, you could actually have this set up in two different vehicles and you could just move it from one vehicle to the other. In the box, it comes with a USB cable. The cable it comes with though, is really designed for you to plug it in and then put it into one of the USB sockets in your, in your vehicle. But that means the cable's visible and I, I don't like that. I like these things to be permanently wired into my vehicles. So for the last three dash cams that I've had, I've actually run the wiring from the fuse box using a, a fuse tap and running it up the A pillar and then along the headlining to where the mirror is. And, and that's how I've chosen to do it. So for that, I had to buy a separate cable. You can get aftermarket cables that will do this for maybe eight or nine bucks, something like that. They'll be from companies you've never heard of and likely that company will not exist in 12 months. Or if it is, it won't be on Amazon anymore. I don't really want to put no-name wiring into a rather nice truck. So I bought the Garmin cable, which is called the parking uh, power cable. But that's $35. So I have to say it hurts. And I'm not going to recommend to you that you buy it, but I did. And the reason I did is purely because if there's a problem with the wiring of my truck, at least I know Garmin's still gonna be around in a few years if I have to go back to Garmin to say, hey, you set my truck on fire. And they'll probably then say, it's how you installed it, Julian, but that's for another day. However you power it, whether it's any of the options we just talked about, you pop an SD card into it. This one comes with a 16 gig SD card, which honestly is enough. And if it's not, 128 gig card these days is 15 bucks. So 
Don't cheap out, get what you want. Once you've done that, you power it up and that's it. And then you go through the settings. I have it set up so that every time the truck turns on, it starts recording. I also have the screen time off after one minute. I have sound recording off. Now that's optional in this dash cam and other Garmin dash cams I've had before, there was no sound option. This one will record sound. I don't know why I would want to record the sound inside my vehicle when the camera is trying to capture what's happening outside that vehicle. During an incident, you're gonna capture whatever choice words you're using at the time you're mashing your foot onto the brakes and holding onto that steering wheel with your dear life. I don't know if I'd wanna replay those. If there's not an incident happening and I'm in the truck with other people, they may not appreciate the fact that I'm recording the conversation. And if I'm in the truck on my own, you probably shouldn't be listening to the conversations. And if there is a conversation, that's already a bit weird. So what I'm getting at is I don't really see the point of recording the sound inside a vehicle on a dash cam when the whole purpose is to capture what's happening outside the vehicle. I'm gonna come back now to that built-in battery. Now, there is something else that it helps you do and that in Garmin speak is called parking guard. Parking guard is if your vehicle is parked up, if there is movement in front of the vehicle, um, you can set it so it will turn on. In fact, you can set it so it will record before that incident actually happened by about 15 seconds. I think the battery helps with this feature. In fact, you can set parking guard to only work with the battery in the Garmin unit. But what that will do is that will limit parking guard to only about 30 minutes or so for as long as that battery lasts. Looking at some other features in here, there is a feature called hyperlapse. That could be pretty cool, actually. Uh, I didn't notice that when I first bought it, so it might've been a feature that came in a, in a later update of the firmware, which does happen. Thank you, Garmin. They do update a lot of their products, including this one and including the dash cam. You have to manually set that. So in other words, you set up hyperlapse to start recording. And if you're doing a long journey and you think it's gonna be a cool journey, it will record a hyperlapse for you of what that dash cam is, is seeing. If you're gonna do something like that for social media, I would say get a suction cup, get your GoPro and do a proper job of it. I don't think a dash cam, which has got no stabilization on it, is only 14, 40, 30, sec, uh, 30 frames a second. I don't really think that's gonna give you the sort of quality you'd want for something like uh, social media. But on the other hand, if you're doing it just to show your friends on your phone, have at it, go ahead, do it. But for me, that's one of those features that, like sound, don't really need it. For their dash cams, Garmin has a dedicated app. It's called Garmin Drive. Garmin Drive allows you to connect your phone to your dash cam and then change an awful lot of settings, including the camera settings, the frame rate. The app also allows you to have a look at any footage that's been taken. It's really bad, like it's just, horrible. I use Garmin Connect every single day, mainly because of my, my watch, my Fenix 7X. It's a phenomenal app. Uh, Garmin Drive, I think, was developed by Garmin's B team. It's clunky, it's not very intuitive, and the connectivity is horrible to, to, uh, to the dash cam. I actively don't use it. If you want to download footage from your dash cam, I would pull the memory card out and plug it into your Mac or your PC and just download the footage from there. I certainly wouldn't bother with this Vault. The, the Vault is a $9.99 a month subscription that enables you to take any footage that's been uploaded to that Vault by your camera and keep it, I think for up to 30 days. I really don't see why you would do that. Why not just pull the memory card out and put it in your, in your computer? The only time you really need to be downloading the footage from this is if you've had an incident you're not going to be regularly going into this to check the footage out. So I really wouldn't bother with Garmin Vault and I actually don't bother with the app. I use the app probably more for this video than I've used it in the last year and a half. Now this is where my love of all things Garmin does tend to fail me a little bit. Okay, so let's come back to the purpose of a dash cam. Well, let's look more about the features of a dash cam are that you really need. You need a good lens. You need a good sensor that can capture between the lens and the sensor day and night clear footage where you can clearly see details and ideally, if necessary, license plates as well. And you need it to be reliable enough that it doesn't fail you because in all likelihood, you wouldn't know it was failing until you actually needed the footage from it. Uh, this has all those, there's no question. This Garmin device has all those things, but then it has all this other stuff as well that you just don't need. And that includes the app. So I would honestly say, don't bother with the app. Just don't bother with it. So if I was gonna try and sell this to you, 
There's a laundry list of features I could use to tell you why this camera is so awesome and why it's so much better than any other camera from anybody else. But I'm not trying to sell this to you. This is an opinion piece. This is my own impression of what this unit is like. So firstly, am I happy with this unit? I'm very, very happy with it. It does everything I want it to do. So would I buy it again? No, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't do because there are so many features on this that I just I just don't use and I don't see why I should have to pay for them. Right now, this unit is on sale on Garmin's website for $239 plus tax here in the US, but Garmin have other products in their range. So if I wouldn't buy this one, which one would I buy? Well, I definitely buy Garmin. I like the brand, I trust the brand, and generally their electronic stuff is reliable, which is what you want in a situation like this. There is uh, a unit further up the range of this one, which is permanently connected through LTE. You could be sitting on the other side of the world, you could pull out your phone and you could just check that what you can see out the windshield of your vehicle that you parked maybe at the airport um, is still the same as it was before. Now, I could see some benefits for doing that, but if your vehicle's parked up and you're not driving it, the only thing you're gonna really catch her is either something you can post on TikTok, I guess, or more importantly, you'll be able to see in real time what they're doing with your vehicle while they're stealing it. You can probably tell from my body language here, I, I just don't see the point of this. I don't see the benefit of something like this. If you really want to track your vehicle, get an air tag, leave it in your vehicle. It's much cheaper and you don't have to pay any subscription service for it either. So would I buy that one? No, I wouldn't. Let's go to the other end of the scale. At the bottom of the scale, at the low end of the range, Garmin has the Garmin Dashcam Mini 2. This sells for $129. It is tiny and here it is. It has no screen on the back. It has no GPS. I don't think it has hyperlapse. It doesn't really have any features at all. I think the only thing that's really missing in terms of the essential features here is this does not have GPS. But if I was gonna start again and I had a new truck or a new car and I did not have a dash cam, uh, I would buy the Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2 because it has all the features I need and none of the features I do not need. Hope this is useful. Um, if it was, please like and subscribe. If you've got any comments to make of anything you'd like to see in videos like this or any questions or anything on my experience, please leave it in the comments below. I love reading them. I love interacting with the comments that I get on these videos too. And do subscribe if you're interested in videos like this. More to come, more focus on triathlon, more focus on other stuff. Maybe a few more Garmin devices, I don't know. Thank you.